Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, how are you all going? It's Dry That Aussie Metal Guy here with Crank.com and with Cranium Radio. So today, tonight, wherever you are in the world or this morning, uh, it's the great pleasure that I'm having a chat with UK folk punk legend Frank Turner, who's due to release his 10th studio album, Undefeated, May 3rd through Extra Mile Recordings. Frank, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time. It's nice to chat to you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. Absolute pleasure to get to chat to you about this album. This is an absolutely ripping album. I'd heard of your music before, but this was really, really good to kind of dive into this album and a hell of a lot of your back catalogue, but mainly this album. This was a really really thoughtful insightful album and one i just totally connected with on the first listen i've been playing it over and over again on the stream i sent as well i think it's mainly in part to being in my 40s and i kind of got a lot of what you were saying sure absolutely i mean it's you know it, it, i mean it's not a concept record but i mean one of the themes is kind of uh, getting older, you know, I'm 42 these days. Um, uh, it's a terrible shame. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, I, I mean, I still consider myself a punk um, at, at, at the center of it all. But like, you know, I can't really um, write songs like Teenage Kicks at this point in my life. Do you know what I mean? That would be that would be dishonest, should we say. So there's an attempt to kind of say something meaningful about trying to trying to maintain this, um, <laughs> this approach to life as you as your back starts hurting. Uh, exactly and that kind of comes back to never mind the back problems and kind of as yes, you were saying right. you have some of these d these real different influences in from your career as well you have these these punky numbers and kind of these americana folk tracks as well and just these really really um hard-hitting lyrics in some of these tracks as well that kind of hit home and kind of have you thinking like um the latest one letters tell us about that one uh, that, that's a song. It's kind of it's about a pen friend I had when I was a kid. I was on a I was on a camping holiday when I was a kid, and um, uh, did, I'm going to tell you a terrible truth. I was wearing a corn hoodie, uh, if you can imagine such thing. I would have been about 13, 14 maybe, and uh, there was a girl um, on the same campsite who was wearing a Pennywise hoodie, and she came over and was like contemptuous of my corn hoodie and we became friends and then we became pen friends and weirdly enough i never saw her again after that first sort of week or whatever we hung out but she sent me tapes of like um dead kennedys and black flag and uh, you know minor threat but but also operation ivy and rancid and basically she was a huge education for me and it was this really important relationship in my life that was almost entirely paper-based and um you know i was going through a box of old stuff not that long ago and came across a bunch of the letters that we were writing to each other and it just sort of it, it, i mean first of all it was kind of it was nice to see that like I, I was a punk when i was a kid but also you know to just sort of how vital that that um relationship was and i mean you know people don't tend to write handwritten letters much these days for good reason i mean emails a lot a lot easier <laughs> yeah well some people are probably like watching this going what's a letter well it's a text message yeah. you put on a piece of paper yeah yeah and you and send off exactly. to people and they'd get it maybe in a week and then you'd wait for yeah. a letter back and you'd always be excited as a kid to get this letter and then mixtapes that was always something of our generation we'd hand back and forth to each other and that was uh, something absolutely. i was always big on like being in a country area going here check this out and right like you know that. i did a lot of tape trading when i was a kid i did i actually did vhs trading for a while as well um all of which has been ruined by youtube because all of the obscure <laughs> stuff i had is now on youtube so whatever um but yeah so it's you know it's just a song about kind of remembering those kind of pivotal moments and and that form of communication yeah, um, and I did mention like kind of uh, you've been in the career for like coming up on 20 years and a track I wasn't going to bring up right now, but I figured I would show people, man. Tell me about that one, dude, because yeah. that's a really, really oh. kind of cool track. And I think it kind of ties in a little bit to the next thing about coming up on 3000 or whatever shows yeah, you've yeah, been yeah, playing, sure. dude. 
Yeah, I mean, show people, I'm not supposed to have favourites on an album, you know, it's like picking your own favourite child, you're not really supposed to do it, but nevertheless, I, yes. I love show people a lot. Um, uh, it's a song, I, I was on tour, there's a band uh, called Truck Stop Honeymoon, who are a two-piece country band um, from, well, from New Orleans, and but they now live in Wales, and I'm not entirely sure why. But anyway, I had them out on tour with me um, in the UK at the start of last year, and, and they're just, you know, Mike, the singer, and, and his wife, Katie, They've been on tour since I think before I was born and they're still going now. And I was watching them side stage and, and you know, there's something quite vaudevillian about what they do that's quite old fashioned in a way. I mean, they're absolutely brilliant and everyone should check them out. But I was just kind of watching them and I just, that's the word that came to mind. It was like, these are, these are show people. And it's such a source of pride to me as I go through my life, you know, in terms of like my identity and my sense of community and all that kind of thing. It's not based in a place, it's based in a profession. And to give an example of this, the other day I was in a, um, I was in Bogota Airport in Colombia, if you can believe that. And um, I was in the immigration queue and the, there was a guy in front of me in the queue and he was wearing like Converse, black jeans, a black hoodie. He had a lanyard and like a, um, a carabiner on his belt. He had molded earplugs going in. He had certain types of tattoos. And I was just like, that's a tour person. Do you know what I mean? I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who he's working for, but that guy is a crew person on a tour and therefore, and like, and we're kin. Do you know what I mean? Like immediately. And just, you know, that broader sense of just a sense of belonging to like this idea of a kind of an international touring community. And like, there are skills that we have, do you know what I mean? And it says in the song, making pillows out of your shoes and fixing stuff with duct tape. And the, there's, a, there's a line about using guitar string for a fuse, which is actually a true story. We were about to go on stage in a festival in America one time and uh, my keyboard player's keyboard wasn't working. And my um, uh, stage manager, Got, got a bit of a guitar string, ran on stage and jammed it into the fuse with his finger and <laughs> held it there for the entire first song. And it worked, um, you know, and like, so, you know, it's just a, it's a celebration of that kind of community of people. Yeah, and you play so many um, shows as well. How do you retain that that motivation and that drive to keep playing? And I know it's probably... Uh, <laughs> You answer the question first and I'll jump well, in. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I just, I feel lucky. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, I mean, first of all, that's all I really wanted to do when I was a kid was travel and play shows. And that's what I do now. And it's so, I, I'm aware of how privileged it is to like essentially be living your teenage dream. Um, it's also, like when I was a kid, um, when, when I was starting out as a musician, there were so many great songwriters that I knew. And, and for whatever reason, luck or whatever didn't go their way and, and they don't play music for a living anymore. And I sort of feel like I have to enjoy it on their behalf as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like my friend Adam's the best songwriter I know and he doesn't play music anymore because it didn't work out for him. And like, you know, I, I don't mean to sound patronizing towards him in any way. He's still no. a dear friend of mine, but like, you know, he didn't get he didn't get the fortune of doing what I do. Therefore, I need to enjoy it. But it, and then finally, I mean, it's the one thing in life I'm I'm reasonably confident I'm good at. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, one would hope after nearly three thousand shows that I had some sort of aptitude <laughs> for this. But you know, I I um uh, I, I I know what I'm doing when I'm on a stage. Do you know what I mean? I feel comfortable and and I love it. And it's almost kind of like a state um how the scene is these days as a recording artist like unfortunately it's our generation we used to buy albums and you'd know you'd get the mixtapes and you'd go buy an album and you check out the sure. band credits and it was our thing these days it feels like artists make these unreal albums like undefeated is a fucking amazing album like you make these albums and you kind of give out your property and you kind of hope the fans grab these copies and you make you gotta kind of got to play all these shows to make at least yeah. a living to do the next fucking album or whatever for them. Absolutely. I mean, it's an interesting moment in the kind of, I mean, we could get into the weeds on this if we, yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to, but like, but it's, you know, like, I mean, um, I'm fortunate in the sense that I love touring. So like yeah. I do it anyway. So, and then it is how I make my living. I mean, there's no, there's an argument to be made that like um, the, the ability to kind of make a living just through selling recorded music was a weird kind of blip in the history of being a musician. If you take the centuries long view of it, do you know what I mean? In the, in the 19th century, if you were a musician, you wanted to make a living, you had to play. Um, and that's true. And that's true again now. Um, and broadly speaking, so it's, it's, I'm not overly bothered about it. It's important to say, of course, that there are bands or acts or whatever, you know, is, would, the, would a new Nick Drake kind of exist in this world? I mean, that's hard to say, because 
if playing live isn't something that you're able to do or comfortable doing or whatever it might be, um, you know, then you are kind of screwed. <laughs> so it, like, Exactly. Yeah. It's got its positives yeah. and neg negatives and kind of this will touch exactly. on the next thing. The record labels kind of had a huge hold on the industry, whereas now as an independent artist, which you've kind of stepped away from the major labels and I think Do One was kind of a track if you want to mention that as well <laughs> it kind <laughs> yeah. of refers to that that you've kind of stepped away from these major labels because they don't sure. have as much control as an independent artist you can control mm -hmm. your property you can release your music on yeah. these platforms yeah definitely i mean so I'm, I'm with a label called extra mile who i've been with since day one we licensed my stuff to a major label for a few records and initially we sort of did it because they offered and it was just like fuck it why not and and i assumed that we'd do one and we ended up doing five which was completing the contract and they they wanted to do more, which, you know, and no harm, no foul, but like yeah. I've, I've gone back to my original setup again, which I'm very pleased about. I mean, I think broadly speaking, what, you know, this is this is broadening the conversation out a bit, but like, you know, people talk about the internet streaming, blah, 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 blah. Like there are downsides to it, which is most of what people talk about, but everybody should remember the enormous elephant sized plus side, which is that distribution is much, much easier. Now, you know, when I was starting out as a kid, the idea of getting a record into a shop was like, nearly impossible. Do you know what I mean? The hoops you have jumped through. Nowadays, pretty much anyone in their bedroom can get a song on Spotify. Um, and and indeed, you know, I think about the fact like, when I was a kid, somebody told me about the Cro-Mags, and it took me two years to get hold of Age of Quarrel. Right. Um, and, and I thought it was all right. <laughs> um, but like anyone listening to this can, can now go and find a copy of Age of Coral on Spotify before the end of this sentence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And ultimately, that's a good thing, you know. And I think one of the really cool things looking at the state of music now is how kind of like genre free younger bands are, because you don't have to be kind of ghettoized in the genre anymore. You can listen to anything you want and you can put all of it in your music and who cares, you know. And I think that's got to be a better thing. Yeah, it is. I had an email from a heavy metal band that said, we play all genres, which is great to see. And it kind of touches on, no, thank you for the music as well about, mm. you know, the gatekeeping and I refuse to right. take part in gatekeeping people's art. Yeah. And that's something I've never done as well. If I don't like something, I'm not going to tear someone's vision down just because I don't well, get it. If, you know, hearing something you don't like is liberating because, yeah. you know, <laughs> because you go, cool, I don't need to pay attention to that anymore. I mean, to pick... A perhaps slightly obvious example. Personally, I can't stand the Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> but the Red Hot Chili Peppers wake up in the morning and they make Red Hot Chili Peppers fans happy. And that's a positive contribution to the world. And, and long may they continue to do that. But the fact that I know that I don't really care for their music means that when they put out a new record, I don't listen to it. Do you know what I mean? And and maybe I'm missing out. I mean, who knows? But like, there's already way too much music. So in a funny way, identifying stuff that you don't like frees up time to find more stuff that you do like and i just think you know there's not enough time in the world to spend your time hating on bands you don't like the song no thank you for the music by the way i was at a <laughs> i have to tell this story i was in an award ceremony in 2021 because i'd been nominated for an award for the live streams i did in lockdown which were raising money for independent music venues um and i kind of knew i wasn't going to win and um but the person who did win in my category was the person who raised the most money for themselves during, during lockdown, who is a major label artist who shall remain nameless. And and I mean, whatever, like, good luck to them all. And award ceremonies are bullshit anyway. But I just remember kind of looking around the room and just thinking, these are not my people. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily need to set fire to their houses. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, I just don't want to hang out with these people. I know which tribe I belong to, and it's not this one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we're just about there. But I'm going to ask for last word, shout outs, thank yous, sure. or anything else you'd like to add in there, my friend. Uh, well, so, I mean, I've been to Australia many times in my life um, and I was there. In fact, I came twice last year um, and I'm not allowed to um, be specific at this point, but I will be back in Australia soon. Um, uh, we're announcing some stuff soon. Awesome. Look forward to it. Everybody go grab Undefeated. It does drop May 3rd via Extra Mile Recordings. It's an absolutely amazing album. I love the Thank whole you. bloody thing, mate. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. Thank cool. you. I Cheers, hope to mate. see you in Australia. Definitely. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Oi, you're tuned in to Dry That Aussie Metal, guys, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.